good morning from india so this is an interesting case of a young 42 year old male diabetic hypertensive presented with history of myocardial infarction in december 2022 and at that time he had an acute kidney injury and creatinine went up to 3 he was stabilized on medical therapy and then angiography was done which showed a critical lesion in LED and right coronary artery. And his ejection fraction has recovered over time. Possibly his artery was recanalized in time. So there was no major damage to the myocardium. So he's recovering from that. And now he came to us for the final treatment. And he's planned for a angioplasty to LED in RCA. And okay, Dr. Dai is planning for a no contrast or you can say very low contrast angioplasty. So we are planning that we'll go by the previous angiography only angiogram, which was done in December 2022. So you can see here, the left main is fine. Circumplex has lesion, which is maybe 40-50% of the mid part. It is small ramus, which is okay. You can see there's the early diagonal, which has some lesion, maybe 50-60%, but LED is very tight and calcified also in proximal and mid part with almost 90% lesions. Diagonal has around 70% lesion in the mid part. So you can see the origin of the LED is quite difficult. Uh, if we go are uh, going just by the Fluoroscopic image without any dye. You can see RC is also quite tight. Proximal part is around 50-60%, distal around 80%. So that also has to be fixed. So we are planning for a no contrast angioplasty with support of imaging, mainly IVAS, and maybe we'll try saline OCT also. We have taken a 7 French sheath, and this is a 7 French guiding catheter 3.5. And this is a normal, uh, you know, uh, copy wire. wire, which is all-star wire. And here you can see that we are negotiating this wire without any contrast. And based on the angiographic images, we are guiding our uh, passage. You can see that we are moving in different directions. And you can definitely you know, not con inject anything and the wire is in the LED. So up till now, no injections. So the next step is to do a IVAS. And I'm going to do an IVAS, but if, since the IVAS was in the catheter for a while, I will just remove all the blood which was in the system. And this is with the help of a nitroglycerin injection, just to you know give nitro and also uh, wash it out. So that not too much blood should remain in the catheter for a long time. This is very important because catheter-induced thrombus formation is a common problem and should always be avoided. Although we have given 10,000 units of heparin to this patient, we will do a ACT in between. And he has been loaded with aspirin and uh, Brillenta, I think, Ticagrelor. Yeah. So here, this is the IVAS, which is a Volcano system, and I have put it in the distal segment. So now this is very important to note that we will see which is the normal segment. So here we are in the normal segment. So here we start seeing a plaque formation. So probably this is the normal landing segment zone, yeah. where we have to land. So this is the landing zone. And this looks like a, almost 2.75 to 3 millimeters. Okay. So now you can see that uh, this is the position of the gaster in the distality where we have to land the stent most likely. So we are storing all the images so that we get a fair idea of what is our landing zone. Okay, so here the vessel is quite big and we are in the, where are we? So we are in the proximal segment. So it doesn't appear to be heavily calcific or something. And this is the left main. So you will see, this is the ostium of the LED. So more or less up to the ostium. So we, we have to, to go more diagonal. or less up to the ostium. Yeah. The diagonal will be covered. The but the diagonal okay. ostium is okay. Yeah. So no yeah? need to protect. And the size of the left uh, LED is also about 3.5 or so. Okay. Fine. I am taking it out. And we'll take a balloon to dilate this. So here we are. Not a big problem. This is, the blockage is quite uh, long, so we have to put. So we are taking this, it. yeah. So this is a two, two into fifteen. Fifteen. So we are almost at the ostium. So based on the previous recorded, uh, you know, positioning, go up two, four, six, eight, 
and we have done the pre dilatation now we have to take the stain and uh, so we have the choices the choices are we can take a 348 or take a 360 so we'll take a 60 3.5 yeah. into 3 or 3.5 2.5 so we have a tapered stain tapered stain 3.5 360 so this is a biomine 3.5 360 at this time we at just at when we will be at the ostium we will have give some dye which is 2 ml of contrast that's all because i can also see that calcium little calcium, calcium, calcium there yeah. so this will give us some idea so show me the first shot please so just very carefully yeah. have a look and we can identify some markers so we'll take the same view yeah more or less okay okay so we have just given 1 ml of 2 ml of contrast Sometimes if you do the second inflation, it becomes a little bit better. Redistribution of forces, deflate. And then we will take a 3.5 now. 3.5. Because distally is very okay. well expanded. Yeah. So the ECG. So the important things are when we are doing ultra low contrast PCI, keep looking at the ECG, patient symptoms. All these are indicators that yes, everything is okay. Yeah. If there is a side branch occlusion, if there's or, no flow, slow flow, there's no other way to diagnose yes. because we are not giving any dye. The only way to diagnose is by symptoms or by EC changes. By and uh, hemodynamics. Yeah, hemodynamics, yeah. Okay, so this is fantastic. And we can do uh, this thing, uh, stain boost. Stand so you can look at the stain boost enhancement, which is on the volcano. Now, this system is a very interesting one, which is an offline system, which is continuous and I can see it very clearly without doing any digital imaging. So we can see that it is very clear. So now I can again see on the, now this looks that the stent is fully yeah, expanded, so expanded here. and we can go distally. Okay. Yeah. So I'll move distally. Okay. Now we are in this segment. You can see that the stent is not so well expanded here. Your lock. Go up two, four, six, eight. Okay. Fine. Yeah, it's gone. It's gone. gone. Deflate. Epicranial, now it is good. So everything up till now seems all right. And uh, so I'll take this out. So what do you want to do, IVAS or OCT? You can First, OCT. We, since we have the IVAS, we, we can, can do, do IVAS and then reconfirm with the saline OCT. So this is the volcano IVAS, which we have again taken the same. So we are more distal part. Vessel is looking quite good without any plaque. Now, left and right is coming proximal. There is no lesion here. And coming proximal. Now you can see the stent ended at a normal segment with very well expanded stent. So you can see the good expansion up to this point. There is some electricity, but I think that's because of fibrotic lesion. But the vessel size is lumen is quite good. Here again, the vessel luminal area is quite good. There is some fibrous plaque on 11 o'clock position. And now we have, I think we have catched the ostium perfect. Yes, yeah. perfect. I think it's perfect. So just at the ostium we have landed. So it's good. According to IVAS, uh, you know, imaging, everything seems good. Yeah. So this was a 3.5 into 3. And we dilated it with a 3.5 proximal and the mid and up to the almost distal segment. So distally, it is very clear that there is no dissection, very good apposition and uh, stent expansion looks good. So this is one thing which we have confirmed that the distal segment is absolutely fine. And we can do one more shot, but I think it's not necessary mm -hmm. and uh, we are fine. So this is pure saline only and everything is okay so now this led has been done and uh, with a long stent everything is okay taking the right catheter rca rca please rca guiding so this is just to you know uh, emphasize that uh, even in multi vessel pci we can do this so normally in a slight you know, two vessel procedure or a three vessel procedure, it is always a good idea to do a ACT in between. There is no harm. So RC has two lesions. One is the proximal part around 60-70% will confirm with diverse and there is a distal lesion which is significant. We definitely we have to fix. 
So either we can use one small stand in the just part, and if required, another still stand, small stand in the proximal part. Okay. So this is the plan, and uh, we should also try to see if there is any calcium which is visible in a in a ultra low contrast PCI. We should take the help of uh, these landmarks on a normal angiogram, and here we see that uh, there is some calcium which is at the bifurcation. So everything has to be before that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah. this looks engaged. The pressure is okay. So we are fine. Now I will try to negotiate the wire. In a small branch. In the small branch. Okay. Yeah. So we are in a reasonable branch. And at this stage, we can even do a dilatation in the distal part or we can do a IVAS first. So since it is not very very, very tight. So we will try to do with the IVAS first and see the plan, the stenting, size, length, and location. So this is in the distal segment. One, let's two, do a three, pullback. Four. Yeah, this the is the tight, tight portion. So let me just uh, locate this also. This is the locator, okay? So this is how we have to uh, see the distal positioning of the distal stent. And this is the proximal. So you can see that this is the proximal landing zone. So this means it is a small stent, 15, 16 millimeters. And then there is some disease here. I think we can not leave to this, be done. Yeah. We can leave all that. And proximally, we are coming in the proximal segment. So this is the tight yeah, portion. Yeah, this is the tight portion. So this is, you can see, now this is the proximal and this is the proximal landing zone. So this will Again, be a small stent. Very small yeah. stent, okay? So 3.5 and 3.75. So 3.5 stent is required. The vessel size is 3.5 oblique 4, so maybe 3.75. And this is the proximal okay. landing zone. Measure here also. Inside. Now this is the location of the distal landing zone. And according to this, looks looks like a 12 to 15 millimeter stent. Yeah. And I'm going to just exactly put it there. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Go up two, four, six, eight. So this is how it looks. And we can even take a slightly longer stand if you want. We can take a huh. 22 or 23. 23 is okay. 23 3 .5. expedition. 3.5, 23 expedition. So this is a Zines uh, Alpine. Yeah. Yeah. 3.5. So this is. Uh, uh, you know, uh, high pressure device, we can go up to 12 at most, 14 atmospheres yeah, without easy. too much of increase in size. Yeah. So you can see that we are almost matching in this uh, position with the distal edge of the ultrasound, uh, you know, IVAS detector. Okay. And we can now give you a quick check, deflate. So we do it for about 30 seconds. Because, you know, the, there are some few studies which show that 10 second is, you know, less. 30 second expansion is better than 10 seconds. Okay, deflate, please. Okay. And if we can see on the, uh, again, the stand boost, it looks good. Yeah. So we are done. And now we take the second stand in the proximal. Yeah, so here we can take a 15, 3.5, yeah. 15. Or even 3.515 should yeah, be good. Yeah. yeah. In case required, we can go with a four yeah. in, if it is needed. So why we are doing the second stand now and not doing the post dilatation? Because in case uh, we needed a post dilatation to both, then we, and with a four we can do with one balloon, or uh, in one shot. Otherwise, we'll have to go two times. So this looks again expanded well. 12, 14. Now let us do an IVAS. You want IVAS and OCT? Yeah. We can do an OCT also. Yeah, we will do OCT also. Okay. But first IVAS and then post dilatation if needed and then final OCT. Okay, so the ECG is okay and the hemodynamics okay, everything okay. Yeah. So now we are in the distal part, just distal to the stent. So you can see the vessel is quite normal at this point. The stent is very well opposed. Maybe we can go one mm post dilatation more. So we can go 3.5 high pressure. And here also, it is not fully dilated. There is some under expansion, 
there is no malapposition. So the proximal and distal edges are looking fine. Yeah, again, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah it's perfect. So but the proximal, proximal edge is perfect. Yeah, we can now see the second stent. Yeah, again, this there is no dissection. The distal edge and position is perfect. We are landed in some plaque, so it's acceptable because the expansion is good. The lumen area is quite good. So we can do with the, the same three point five balloon. Yeah. yeah, that's all. So overall looks almost done. So this is the you know the stent Mr. boost, yeah. which is an online stent boost and very nice. And we don't need to do repeated shoots with this. Go up two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. Okay, deflate. Fine. I think we are done. Okay. Yeah. So we will do a OCT finally, and that's it. It was slightly small. So you can see that. We may have to use one more run. So stand yeah, is looking that's fine. Nice. Stand looks good. We may have to use one more one run more for the proximal run. stand because it was quite long. Uh, so uh. it has not covered both the stands. So we can see that very clearly. So the proximal stand we will do. The distal stand looks okay. Yeah. yeah? So I will bring it a little bit back in this position. That's all. And... Uh, once you are ready, you'll tell yeah, us. Yeah, I'm ready. You are ready? Yeah. Inject. Perfect. That's very nice. Some under expansion. We may to use a four balloon. So you see how clean the image is. The distal is perfect. The stent is well opposed, expanded. Proximally, we might have to do a little bit. Yeah. So show the size. For RCA, there, there is no other branch. It's very easy to do saline OCT. But for it is much more difficult. Yeah, yeah. Four ten. So we are taking a four ten balloon. This is a fifteen millimeter stent. So we are fine. The distal edge is absolutely fine, and you can see that uh, we will do this. Cine boost. It's okay. Yeah. So you can see now very clearly that we are absolutely perfect and position. And uh, go up, please. So you can see that, you know, you don't need to do injections to see where you are. You should use always use this uh, stent boost, which is uh, now available in various ways. And this is the one, we have one in the device, you know, this uh, cath lab itself, which is the Siemens. And this is the Volcano. Uh, this is the system, I think, uh, which is known as uh, the co-registration system. And we can even do a co-registration, but for that we need to do injections. So contrast-induced nephropathy is a is a real problem. Uh, this is IVOS. Yeah. Okay, this is IVOS. Okay. Then give me the OCT, please. So we have to be careful. We take all precautions and give minimum. So the only thing which can prevent contrast-induced nephropathy is hydration and less contrast or no contrast. So this is like doing angioplasty with no contrast. Yeah. Inject full. Perfect. Very nice. Show it on this big screen. So the distal edge is absolutely clean. Yeah, very and, well deleted uh, now. Very well deleted. And the proximal stent is course. also very, very well up no now. Yeah, no, no red, no red uh, these things. Okay. So we are fine. This is absolutely done. And uh, so we don't need to inject anymore. Uh, we don't, so we did only three ml contrast in this entire procedure.